Hello world and welcome back to App One Help with your host Lazarus and in this specific video I will be trying to start up a new series which I will title Formula Flop. Now, what this series will revolve around would be drivers who had exceptional or even decent junior for junior careers, you know, in the feeder series and in other categories, but come the main stage, be it Formula One, NASCAR, IndyCar, MotoGP, they simply choked and did not live up to their expectations. So then, Without further ado, let's take a look at the first Formula Flop case and roll the intro! So, Formula One, the pinnacle of motorsports, where the winners are viewed as gods, where the young drivers all aspire to go to one day, and to its credit, sport did provide us with a couple of memorable legends of motorsport in general. But if you ask many of the older F1 fans, they will almost unanimously agree that the greatest era to for Formula 1 actually was early to mid-2000s. And this is where this story takes place. Takuma Sato was a hot property. Uh, in motorsport world after he won the British Formula Formula 3 title, uh, Masters of Formula 3 and Macau Grand Prix in 2001. <clears throat> so naturally, he was snapped up by the Jordan Grand Prix in Formula 1, who at the time uh, had an engine deal with Honda. So, Japanese driver in a team powered by a Japanese engine seemed like a match made in heaven. And to his credit, Sato did put up a couple of decent displays throughout the 2002 season with his highlight being a 5th place finish in his home Grand Prix in Japan. In turn, uh, the main Honda team, which was known as a BAR, or British American Racing Team, snapped him up as a test driver for 2003. So, uh, because of this, he actually didn't compete in majority of the 2003 season, but was again given the call-up for the final race of the season in Japan, after the regular driver Jacques Villeneuve decided that he didn't want to race anymore. Sato again managed to finish quite decently, I think he finished in 6th place, and picked up 3 or 4 points for the team in his one and only outing, which caused uh, the BAR team to actually sign him up full-time for the next season in 2004. And his form did improve, he actually managed to get a podium in the United States Grand Prix in Indianapolis. However, by comparison, his teammate Jensen Button picked up 10 podiums throughout the season and finished in 3rd position overall while Sato languished behind in 8th place with that single podium and just a couple of more uh, point scoring positions throughout the year. Now, 2005 was by comparison much, much, much worse, where Sato only managed to score one point, and in turn for the 2006 season, just as BR team was about to be rebranded as a Honda works team, factory team, Sato was dropped. This, of course, left his F1 career, F1 dream, if you will, in shambles, and it was a huge question mark over whether he will even continue, because at this point he only dro drove Honda-powered cars, so he was kind of a Honda OTP, if you will, and it now wasn't certain whether he will even continue, you know, to compete in Formula 1, so an uh, upcoming Japanese superstar suddenly left without a seat. <clears throat> Enter Aguri Suzuki also a former Formula 1 driver from Japan and a fellow podium sitter. At this point, only him and Sato were uh, the only Japanese drivers to actually have tasted champagne in Formula 1. Now, Aguri's ambition was to found an all-Japanese Formula 1 team, which would have been powered by Honda. Now, for comparison, there was also Toyota in the Formula 1 paddock as well, but their drivers were not Japanese. They were only Japanese by, you know, on paper. So what Aguri meant to do was just found his own team, which he named Super Aguri, for Sato's uh, F1 hopes to well be kept alive. So, of course, they needed a second driver. Now, while Japan does have a rich history of motorsport and a couple of exceptional drivers coming out of the country, there was a question of who will fill the place and be, well, Sato will play second fiddle to, to Sato, if you will. And not that there were few choices, I mean, at the time you had the likes of Satoshi Motoyama, uh, Kotsuge Matsura, or even case could be made for Roger Yosikawa in the United States. Not, not a very strong case, but, but a case nonetheless. So, Now, uh, 
in, at this point in time, while searching for the second drivers, they mostly turn to their domestic series, Formula Nippon, or as it is now known as Japanese Super Formula, which is an insanely competitive series, even by today's standards. So, who they picked up, you may ask yourself. Now, in this day and age, it is no surprise to see a driver of like 18, 19, 20 years of age to make their debut in Formula 1, some for the bigger teams, some for the smaller teams. So, they turn attention then to their domestic series in search of a new Japanese up-and-coming superstar. The 2005 a Formula Nippon series was won by the aforementioned Satoshi Motoyama, but uh, however, Aguri Suzuki settled for the second place driver in that series, uh, up and coming Japanese Yuji Ide. Now, while Ide was young in relative terms, for Formula One and especially for a rookie, he was ancient. Yuji Ide was signed up when he was 31 years old. And while again it is not strange for drivers of that age and close to that age to make their debut, I mean, Damon Hill who won the title, Formula 1 title in 1996, made his debut in 1992 when he was 32, and Pedro de la Rosa, another highly regarded driver, made his debut in 1999 for Aero's team when he was 29. Now, both Hill and de la Rosa had something in common that either didn't, and that is previous Formula 1 either testing or like driving experience. Either was thrust into the one of the least forgiving motorsports in Formula 1 from the get-go without having any previous experience at it. And while, yes, finishing second in Japanese Super Formula is not a small feat by any means, it, the question still remained as to how Ida would fare in, in, on the main stage in Formula 1. While there are no big expectations for new Formula 1 teams, let alone drivers, there was little to no pressure for Ide, all that he basically he needed to do was keep well, keep up with uh, Sato's pace throughout the season, gather some experience and then hopefully provide some results in the coming years. Uh, so, come the first race of the 2006 season in Bahrain, Ide did the complete opposite of that. He qualified in 22nd and last, behind Sato by some 3.2 seconds, but he would actually start the race from the 21st position, the only reason for that being that Kimi Raikkonen actually suffered a suspension failure and was not able to set a time in the qualifying at all. The race for Ida was also pretty short, his engine gave way 35 laps into the race and he was forced to retire. So hopefully Aguri at this point hoped that his luck would improve in Malaysia, which was the next round of the Formula 1 2006 season. So for the Malaysian Grand Prix he again qualified slowest and behind Sato, but this time by a smaller margin, 1.7 seconds behind him to be more precise, he was eventually bumped up to 18th place after four other drivers were given engine penalties and the race started with Ide in 18th position. Uh, his race wouldn't again last much longer, at this time it was the throttle on his car that gave way and again forced him to retire. So by the time the 2006 Australian Grand Prix had rolled around, Aguri Suzuki stated that Ide, his seat was in, well, in jeopardy. He needed to improve his results if he was to keep it. So, Ide did the only sensible thing, he read this call and uh, promptly qualified last again, some four seconds behind Sato. But, but, it is important to know that he actually managed to finish this race in 13th position. Granted, he did do his best impression of a Beyblade spinning around like crazy on the, in the Albert Park circuit, but nonetheless he managed to finish. Three laps down on race winner Fernando Alonso, but he still finished. One lap down on Sato, but still a finish is a finish. So then, next round would see Formula 1 go to Europe, to Italy more specifically for the San Marino Grand Prix. And at this point in, in time, it is also important to note that Super Aguri's main rivals for the season were, again, a brand new team called Midland F1, which actually was risen from the ashes of the Jordan team, for which Sato made his debut back in 2002. Now, uh, the drivers for the Midland team were Dutch driver Christian Albers and Portuguese driver Thiago Monteiro. They were no slouches behind the wheel, but they also weren't anything to write home about decent, but, you know, nothing, nothing too spectacular. So, Ide also knew this, so in an act of team spirit, he gathered his talent, his experience, his racecraft, and on the lap one, he punted 
Christian Albers out of the race, sending him into a spectacular quadruple bear roll from which luckily Albers remained uh, emerged uninjured. Uh, for Ide, the race wouldn't last as long as it did for lap 23, I think, uh, due to the damage sustained in the incident, he was forced to retire due to suspension failure. For this incident, Ide was reprimanded by the stewards and was issued a warning for any future similar uh, conduct. So then, Aguri Suzuki made a statement regarding Ida's performances, stating the lack thereof was actually a result of him not having enough testing in the car and not really understanding how the car actually worked. Which would then beg the question as to why he wasn't signed as a test driver rather than a full-time driver, when, for example, Satoshi Motoyama also had F1 experience when he tested back in 2004. So then, 2006 European Grand Prix in Germany, Nürburgring, where Ida was indeed demoted to a third or test driver, if you will, with his place being taken by a highly regarded Frenchman, Frank Montagny. So then, after some three days after the race had finished, the FAA made a decision which they haven't done before or come to think of it since, which, in which they actually revoked Yuji Ide's super license. What this meant for Ide is that he was no longer allowed to take part in any Formula 1 activities, testing or racing similarly. So, Aguri Suzuki then made a statement that he will work with Ide and the team will work with him to try and get his super license back in order to keep him in Formula 1. But for the time being, he was uh, brought back to Japan to compete in Formula Nippon again, to hone his skills, basically. So, you might ask yourself, how did it come to this? I mean, by all accounts, Ida was a capable driver. So what happened in Formula 1? What caused his performances to dip so suddenly? Well, first, let's take a look at the comment that Aguri Suzuki made before the Australian Grand Prix, where he said that Ida didn't understand how the car worked and had little testing. More specifically, Ida had completed 190 kilometers in testing which was the least amount completed by any full-time drivers. For comparison, the driver who did complete most, uh, well, miles, mileage, in, for, in pre-season testing was actually Jensen Button, who clocked in over 7,000 kilometers. And by comparison, Midland test driver, Markus Winkelhock, completed 300. So, either was only, I think, in front of one driver in terms of testing distance that he completed. Apart from the lack of testing, Formula One team members, drivers mostly communicate either in their native languages or in English, in which Ide wasn't very fluent in, he only was fluent in his native Japanese language, which is not an easy language by any stretch of the imagination, but still much, much more uh, knowledge of the language is expected from a athlete at the top level of motorsport. So the language barrier caused Ide not to have proper testing in the car and therefore his performances were not up to Formula 1 standards. And the, I think the most important thing to note is how even Super Aguri came to be in Formula 1. If you remember, the team was reportedly only founded to keep Takuma Sato in Formula 1. So from the get-go Ide was a disadvantage because of course his highly regarded countrymen, the team was his. To command. So, not that he had any expectations to begin with, but still playing second fiddle from the get-go, I don't think that would fare well with many, many drivers, young or old for that matter. So then, what happened to Ida after Formula 1? So, like we said, he returned to Japan to compete in the Formula Nippon series uh, with very, very little success. Uh, he competed there from 2006 to 2010, where he scored a total of nine points. Nine points. He also sporadically competed in the Japanese Super GT Championship, where in 2006 again, he caused a collision with another car, ignored the subsequent black flag, which led to his entire team being disqualified. So again, not a very good showing. But in 2010, he did manage to win a Super GT race in Suzuka, on route to 11th place in the general standings. His last season so far was 2018, again in the Super GT Championship, after which he 
well, called it quits on his racing career, but however, he is rumored to well, well make a return this year into 2022 uh, for the first uh, first race of the Super GT season, which will be held later this week on, on a Sunday, I think. So then, that was a look back on Yuji Ide's eventful four races in Formula 1. If you think this was a good video, if you learned something about the Japanese driver, feel free to like the video. Also, if you want to offer your opinion, feel free to comment. And needless to say, like and subscribe, ring the notification bell for notifications whenever I upload stuff similar to this. And until next time, this has been F1 Help and I bid you farewell.